For Sahaja Yogis now it's very easy to find out if something is real or unreal, it is truth or untruth, it is love or hatred. Only through vibrations you can know. But going beyond that, I am saying, beyond that one has to know what are these vibrations and what are they made of. What is the subtly, subtle force which is behind those vibrations? We call it is Param Chaitanya, all right, Param Chaitanya so what? What happens to you when you get Param Chaitanya? Is something to be understood, the subtleties. <coughs> As I said, we are made of five elements, all right? So when you get your awakening, when the Kundalini reaches Sahasrara and opens out your fontanel bone area, you become one with the Divine Power, then this Divine Power itself starts flowing through you. A connection is established. Now when she starts flowing through you, this Shakti this starts flowing through you, then what happens? The subtle part we should understand. The subtle part is like this, that these five elements we are made of, these vibrations gradually start breaking into the subtler form of which they are made. So the first thing such a person has is the breaks, you see, as it is said that <coughs> word is God said also in the Bible, the Word is God. Now what is this Word? Word is a silent, uh, you can say, silent uh, commandment, we can call it like that. But the, from that Word comes, according to Indian philosophy, is another thing that we call as Bindu. or we can say a word becomes nad, is a sound, and then it becomes the bindu, means one, is a, one small dot, you can say. And then from this dot, you see all these five elements start coming one after another. The first element that comes out is light. Tej, light, is the first element that comes out. So the essence of the first element is light. We call it Tej, Tejas. It's written, of course, in Sanskrit, but we should understand that how the light pervades Sahaja Yoga so much and you see the light all everywhere. So the first element, which is light and you can say in English, uh, the uh, light's subtle thing is, uh, you can say, enlightenment, you can say. But enlightenment has another meaning. So we can say it's tej, tej. For example, a person who gets realization has a face which is very radiant. So you can say the radiance. The radiance is the subtlety of the light. So this radiance starts showing on your face. Radiance starts uh, expressing itself and with that radiance people get uh, impressed and they start thinking something special about this personality which has radiance. Now you have seen my photographs also, wherever they are, many a times you find lots of light around. That is nothing but the light in me is giving radiance because the light becomes subtler. 
when the light becomes subtler in me, light, light is one of the elements, when it becomes subtler, then it gives radiance. And so, this is the subtle uh, growth within you that takes place. Your faces also start shining. <coughs> they too have radiance and they too have a kind of a different complexion, I would say. This radiance is to be understood, is the subtle uh, of the light, of which we are made light in the gross manner. Then after this, from the light comes the second thing which we call as Vayu in Sanskrit, meaning the air. So the air that we have, which is gross air, what is the subtle of air is this cool breeze that you get. The cool breeze is the subtle of that air. So the subtle of what you understand as cool breeze is what we call vibrations, the subtle of that is air, which is a part and parcel of our making. So this cool breeze is the second uh, thing that you start getting subtler and subtler. When your growth takes place, all these subtle things start expressing themselves. It's not only that you get vibrations, but you get the cool breeze and that is the subtle of air that has built you. Then comes the water. We are also made of water. What is the subtle of water is uh, Sometimes English language, you know, becomes a little short of uh, expression, but they call it, uh, I mean, which makes the skin, uh, hard skin soft. The skin becomes soft. This is another sign of a realized soul that his. Uh, there's some cream they use, there, isn't it, to soften the face. But is the water in us gives us this is the minimum of minimum, I would say. But then a person who is a realized soul becomes very soft very delicate. When he talks to somebody in his voice, there is warmth, or I should say there is, uh, Hindi mein hona. They, to have that flow, watery flow and uh, coolness of the water. So that is the another subtle thing that should be expressed in your behavior, on your skin, on your dealings with others, that you should be like the water which is mobile, which is uh, cooling, which is soothing, which is cleansing. So this also becomes a part and parcel of your being once you become a realized soul. With this water you have also another thing, we call it as Agni, means the fire. So you also have fire, but it's a very silent fire. It doesn't burn anybody, but it burns all the wrong things within you. Whatever wrong things you have, it burns, and it burns the wrong things in other people also. For example, a person comes with a great anger towards you. What happens that this anger becomes cooled down? with the fire that is there. Moreover, a realized soul cannot get burnt, fire cannot burn, the burning cannot come to him. It's very important to understand. Also, if you are doing something wrong, it may burn you. 
But if you are a good Sahajogi, and uh, no, I should say a perfect Sahajogi, fire will never burn. We have an example of Sita Ji that she went into the fire pit, nothing burnt. So this is what one has to understand, that once you get to the subtleties of the fire, so the fire and the water, both of them become sort of uh, divine. For example, the water which uh, you touch, water you drain, whatever you uh, uh, put your hand in the water, the water becomes vibrated, means what? The subtlety of the water comes in it, the coolness, uh, curing power also comes in that water. So when it becomes subtler, all these powers start showing, which you can see for yourself, you don't have to experiment. Then the lastly is the Mother Earth, it's most important, is Mother Earth. There's a photograph you might see which was taken in Russia in my dacha, where the Kundalini is in the Mother Earth, that's clear, it's there. And it is the Mother Earth which shows. For example, I've seen flowers, if you keep them in my room, they blo blossom, they can become very big like that. Uh, never people have seen such big flowers, sometimes they see. I'm doing nothing, I'm just sitting down, and what happens to the flowers? You see, now there, this principle of the Mother Earth works. The subtle Mother Earth, His works, it's a mother. And that gives you all the nourishment and makes you grow healthy. And this is how this subtlety works of the Mother Earth. Mother Earth is the one who is a giver of birth to all these flowers and all these trees and all that but it also plays a big part in us. It's not only the Mother Earth uh, that exists uh, without our connection. And we do not respect the Mother Earth. We have polluted it, we have done all kinds of things, we have removed the trees and we have made a mess out of her, but she's our Mother. And so many subtle things of this Mother Earth come into us. One of them is gravity. A person becomes very attractive, not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. Such a person attracts others. They feel attracted and uh, they feel that something special is about this person. This is one of the quality of the Mother Earth. If she had not kept us attracted, we would have fallen out with her movement. And also other qualities of the Mother Earth also start manifesting within us and we become very, I should say, extremely uh, tolerant, patient person, tolerant and patient, extremely tolerant and patient. But if you are not tolerant, if you are hot-tempered and all that, that Mother Earth principle has not expressed itself. Look at the Mother Earth, how much she tolerates our nonsense, how many wrong things we do against her, but still she tolerates. Sri Ganesha's quality is to tolerate, to begin with. Up to a point he tolerates. In the same way, we to become extremely tolerant, patient and forgiving. This is the minimum of minimum that should happen to all the Sajogis who have vibrations. Because now I've told you all the things that are expressed in your vibrations. It's a thing to be understood that what you have become now is something very great. It's not happened to others. It's not happened to somebody who is not being a Sajogi. You see the people who go to church or to mosques or to temple, see their faces. Look at them, how they do look like. They haven't got anything from the temple, they haven't got anything, from the mosque, they haven't got anything from any one of these places where they go to worship. So that is artificial, that has become something, uh, I should say, uh, without any connection with the reality. Only after realization 
you are connected with reality and you can get the understanding of all these subtleties working through you. Why I'm telling you this? Because I want you to know and recognize yourself, to understand what you are, what you have got. Once you recognize yourself and understand yourself, you can do a lot.